Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. As I said on multiple occasions, over and over again, and I will keep saying it, these guys here will not give us certain information. They will lie by omission. I'm talking about the mainstream corporate media. They will give you certain piece of information, pick and choose, to fit the narrative they want to vomit on us. But the problem is when you uh, read or listen to other articles or I don't know, lectures, you find out or someone making statements, you find information not related to that conversation, but is valid for the subject of, you know, they didn't want to disclose it during the narrative. And you say, oh, wait a second. Hmm, let me uh, look deeper into that issue. And you find out the narrative was just pick and choose. And then you bring things in and you have a more complete uh, view on the issue. So while reading this article regarding the BBC reporters who write a letter saying that the coverage of the Israel-Palestine-Gaza uh, uh, war was uh, favoring Israel, um, I found out something unsurprising to me, but I thought I should mention it to you in case you didn't know it. First, a victim is a victim because doesn't have power. You can't be a victim and have power or dominance, correct? Otherwise, you would not be a victim. You would be the perpetrator, you would be the aggressor, you would be the oppressor. So remember, with that in mind, look at this article or this video. The victim, the person who crimes, uh, cries or the group or the country that cries, we are victims all the time. You look if they have power, then you realize that since you have here, here, here positions covered, how are you a victim? Anyway, so let's start with the article. The main article is from The Telegraph and is from uh, 23rd of November 2023. BBC reporters accuse it of favoritism towards Israel. So a bunch of BBC reporters accuse BBC of favoritism towards Israel. Why? Why? This BBC is British broadcasters, company, corporation, right? It's for the British people. What would it have to do with Israel? Why would they favor Israel? It has no reason. They should be objective, right? Because BBC is one of the objective uh, uh, corporations, media corporations over there. I've been told. Well, I found out it's not true. So, don't be surprised. Letter from eight UK-based journalists to media rival says corporation guilty of, and I'm quoting, double standard in how civilians are seen. Now, let's see. The BBC, the BBC has been accused by its own journalists of favoritism towards Israel and a failure to, and I'm quoting, humanize Palestinian victims, and quoting, and quote, in the ongoing conflict, in a 2,300-word letter to Al Jazeera, oy vey, eight of the corporation's UK-based journalists accused their employer of failing to accurately cover the Israeli-Hamas conflict since the war began. The journalists who asked Al Jazeera not to share their identities for fear or reprisals. Really? In a free world? You gotta be lying to me wrote that, and I'm quoting, humani humanizing coverage of Palestinian civilians has been lacking, end quote, and accused the BBC of being guilty of a, and I'm quoting, double standard in how civilians are seen, end quote. The journalist said, and I'm quoting, the BBC has failed to accurately tell this story through omission and lack of critical engagement with Israel's claims and it has therefore failed to help the public engage with and understand the human rights abuses unfolding in Gaza. And I'm quoting, thousands of Palestinians have been killed since October 7. When will the number be high enough for our editorial stance to change? End quote. The group told Al Jazeera they do not plan to send their letter to the BBC's executives reportedly because they do not believe it will lead to any mean, meaningful discussions. You're telling me that these guys are saying that the British, the Brits are not fair? I thought the Brits were the 
fairest in the land. I mean, am I the fairest in the country? Yes, you are. <laughs> Is it uh, politically correct? No, it's okay. We're gonna have, I don't know, <laughs> uh, what's her name? <sighs> Michelle Michael Obama playing uh, the Snow White. <laughs> That's great. What the hell? Now, the group told Al Jazeera they don't plan to stand. Okay, a BBC spokesman said that the corporation's coverage, and I'm quoting, has made clear the devastating human cost to civilians living in Gaza and Israel. They always put it together. But when it's the other way around, they just go one direction. But anyway, it's not hard to see. Now, this is what was brought to me again. I had an article a while ago ready for you guys. But this is just said, you know, screw it. I'm going to make this video on this because it, it has a uh, meaning, meaning and it's important. So here it is. Danny Cohen. Now, you know, Danny Cohen is Jewish, right? Uh, no, you don't know that. OK, here it is. <laughs> Television executive, right? Uh, what do we have? Education. The son of a middle class Jewish intellectuals. OK, all right. He attended a local Jewish primary school in London. Blah, blah, blah. OK, we got him. We got him, and here it is. Is a British television executive who currently serves as the president of Access Entertainment, which invests in film, money, 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 television and digital companies and content. He was previously the director of BBC Television. This guy was the director with no power, man. This guy has no power. From 2013 to 2015, before that, he was the controller no power as a controller, you're just in charge of BBC One for three years. And he's, how old is he? 49. Good for you, man. And we have a picture of this guy right here. This is the gentleman. Beautiful picture. <laughs> All right, let's go back here. So they said about this Cohen, the director of BBC Television, they say here in the Telegraph, told the Telegraph last week that Britain's Jews are, and I'm quoting, being harmed through its unbalanced reporting, end quote. And he accused a BBC journalist of pro-Palestine bias on her social media feed. Well, Danny Cohen has no power. He's the victim. However, the journalist's letter insisted that terms like, and I'm quoting, massacre and atrocity are reserved only for Hamas, framing the group as the only instigator and perpetrator of violence in the region. This is inaccurate, but aligns with the Bay Bay Sea's overall coverage." End quote. And it says, we are asking the BBC to better reflect and defer to the evidence-based findings of official and unbiased humanitarian organizations. Now let's go and see what this guy says, right? Right there. BBC's former head of television calls for independent review of Israel-Hamas war coverage. And this guy, remember, said here that he said that, right? Being harmed, Britain's Jews are being harmed through its unbalanced reporting. And here he just weasel like whoever you want to believe. BBC's former head of television called for independent. He's nice, he's balanced. Yeah, okay. The BBC former head of television has called for an independent review into corporations' coverage of the Israel-Hamas war. Oy vey! As he accused the diplomatic correspondent of showing pro-Palestinian bias. The woman these guys are talking about. Danny Cohen, the director, right here, director of BBC television from 2013-2015, said Britain's Jews, Jewish people are being harmed through its unbalanced reporting since the war began. And you are the ch director, you are the director of BBC television, and you were the controller of BBC and uh, it's a uh, bias uh, reporting in BBC or something. Are you kidding me? Yeah, well, whatever. Who this? This is Caroline. Probably she's the one that was attacked by this uh, uh, Cohen. He said, the times has come, has now come for a long overdue independently inquiry into the co corporation's editorial and management failures in its re reporting of Israel. Cohen says, the guy with no power. In one example, he pointed out how Carolyn Hawley, the BBC's diplomatic correspondent, has written numerous posts on X, formerly Twitter, expressing concern for the shocking, quote-unquote, and terrifying situation in Gaza, sharing calls of, for a ceasefire and providing multiple updates on the number of deaths there. So it's, it's illegal to say the shocking and terrifying situation in Gaza? 
Is that a fact or just an exaggeration? <sighs> the, but the Telegraph found that just 9% or 18 of her 195 tweets, I heard about twats, and the retweets since the Israel Hamas war began on October 7 have mentioned Israeli deaths, casualties, and hostages, including case studies of family captured. Since the proscribed terror group Hamas invaded, bah, 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 she frequently updated her 8,600 followers on the death toll in Gaza from Israeli military bombardment, which is attempting to eliminate Hamas. Oh, you see how the picture is? Like she's a bitch. Maybe she is, I don't know, but I like it. So anyway, so my friends, uh, only last week she wrote, and I'm quoting, new life amid all the death and destruction with more than 4,000 children killed, 100 UNRWA staff dead, and 200 medics no longer able to help her heal patients. Is it true? My, my concern is this, is it true? And if it's true, you mention obviously the 1,200 uh, victims of Hamas in Israel, that is everywhere, but 4,000 children, who killed those? Hamas? All of them? All right. And United Nations uh, uh, staff, 100 killed in a month and a half. United States would have had atomic bombs over there. The country would have dared to do something like that. 200 medics no longer able to, uh, to help heal pa patients. That's, it's not a disaster. What did you say? Death and destruction. Is, doesn't that qualify? What is Cohen talking about? T tell me about the victims, right? All right. When I'm going to have, when I'm gonna have a, uh, the chief of uh, whatever BBC, a Palestinian, then I will say it's kind of balanced. Until then, shut the f up. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.